Hello, my name is Jit Biswas and I'm a Senior Research Fellow at iTrust SUTD. Today I'm going to give you a brief video walkthrough of our EPIC testbed. Before showing you the various stages of the testbed, let me say a few words about EPIC. EPIC stands for Electrical Power Intelligent Control. The testbed was formally opened in May 2017 as one of the four cyber-physical system testbeds at iTrust. EPIC is a really complete testbed. Why do we say that? It is because in EPIC, we find all the essential components that comprise operational technology and information technology that may be found in typical electrical substations. The EPIC testbed was set up for the purpose of enabling cybersecurity researchers to conduct experiments and to assess the effectiveness of new defense mechanisms on cyber physical systems for electrical power stations. Now let me give you a walkthrough tour of the EPIC testbed. We will begin at one end of the testbed. In the corner, we have a set of 11 AMI meters. AMI means Advanced Metering Infrastructure, which is a standard that was recently introduced in Singapore and is in fact being used to measure power consumptions in our homes. In EPIC, the AMI meters are used to measure properties of the electricity, such as voltage, current, power factor, etc. To its right, at the ceiling level is shown the overall SCADA display, which is mirrored from the HMI display at the SCADA workstation of EPIC. This provides a bird's eye view of what's happening in the EPIC testbed. In modern substations, especially in larger ones, one frequently sees several displays that reflect the state of the substation. Next, we see a cabinet that houses all the station level network switches of the EPIC testbed. Within it are industry grade ethernet switches that are connecting the IEDs and the PLCs and the other devices to the station level networks. In the middle of the room is the place where the operator's desk is located. And behind the operator's desk, we see five cabinets. These are the wiring closets for the hardware components such as IEDs, auto transformers, the bus bars, etc. The front panels are exposed at the front of the cabinet but the doors are kept shut because of the high voltages and currents in the circuits. Control is affected from the front panels that are shown on the cabinet itself and also using software commands over the network. The generation stage IEDs are located in the first cabinet. Control operations that need to be manually carried out have appropriate controls placed at the front panel. The next cabinet contains IEDs from the transmission stage. The next cabinet is also applies to the transmission stage. The fourth cabinet has transmission and microgrid IEDs. And finally, the fifth cabinet has the smart home IEDs. Also included in the cabinets are bus bars and other controls for protection relays and so on. We now move to the generator room where the motors and generators are kept. The door is always kept shut because the motors and generators can become very noisy when the plant is in operation. It can also get very hot because of the load banks. There are three motor generator sets together capable of generating about uh, 30 kilowatts of electricity. At this time, two of the generators are in operation. Within the room, are load banks which consume the generated power. Since the load banks generate a lot of heat while in operation, a powerful exhaust is used to remove the hot air by aluminum clad ducts which may be seen. Two types of load banks are present, the critical loads and the non-critical loads. Critical loads represent critical buildings and services which must always be in operation 24 by 7, such as hospitals, etc. Non-critical loads are sporadic loads that represent the daily demand of electricity that may come from homes, offices, etc. 
it is possible to vary the resistance, capacitance, and the inductance of the loads. In this room are also housed the batteries that belong to the energy storage system, or ESS. The batteries are rectangular objects on top of a rack at the far end. The batteries perform the function of storage and replenishing energy whenever needed. Another very important part of the epic generation stage consists of the variable speed drives, or VSDs, which are the red colored objects in the middle. Variable speed drives are used to control the speed of the motors, thereby varying the power generated by the generators. At this time, the VSDs are configured to keep the motors at a fixed speed of 1500 revolutions per minute. The microgrid stage consists of photovoltaic cells which are located at the rooftop of SUTD. Together, the PV cells or photovoltaic cells can generate up to 34 kilowatts of power on a sunny day. The power from the PVs are stored in the batteries of the ESS and also fed into the smart home stage to meet the demand. However, before being fed into the demand stage, the power must be converted from DC to AC, and this is done by the inverters shown here. Inverters are also used to convert energy stored in the batteries to AC before supplying the energy to meet the demand. In the transmission stage of EPIC, the voltage regulator shown here is used to improve the quality of the generated electricity. Here we have the human computer interface, the HMI display for the main EPIC SCADA homepage. All the four stages are represented here. The generation stage on the right, the transmission in the middle, the smart home or the distribution stage towards the bottom, and on the left hand side on the top is the microgrid stage. In each of the stages, there are horizontal lines representing bus bars. For instance, a blue colored bus bar on the right represents the point at which there is incoming power. At the bottom, we have orange colored bus bar, which is the point at which the loads are given power. The loads are fed directly by the transmission stage. The distribution stage in EPIC is the smart home. At the microgrid stage, to the left, there is a bus bar which is shared between the microgrid stage and the output from the generation stage. Let us now go into each stage one by one. Here we show the generation stage. Generation of electricity takes place through three motor generator sets. The ones on the bottom are representative of bulk power generation that takes place typically in large generators for cities and townships. The third generator is the one that's representative of a locally generated power supply that occurs within the distributed state, distribution stage. Such locally generated power is then fed back into the grid. The two circular objects on the power line in the single line diagram are current transformers. These bring down high currents in the test bed. In this stage, we showed EPIC's transmission stage. Here we have a voltage regulator, the purpose of which is to condition the quality of the electricity that is generated by the generation stage. Next, we see the microgrid stage. For convenience, this stage divided into two parts. The real microgrid is on the right-hand side with the PV system and the energy storage system. There are 110 uh, solar cells located at the SUTD rooftop, together capable of generating up to 34 kilowatts. The energy storage system consists of a number of batteries, together having a power capacity of 120 kilowatts. At the left-hand side, we have the output of the motor and generator stage, which actually belongs to the generation stage. Both sides are supplying electricity to meet the same demand, which comes from the smart home or distribution load. At the center is the point of common coupling. This coupling takes place whenever you have two power sources or more. Here we have power coming from the main grid and generation stage. And on the other side, 
power generated at the microgrid. The power from the two sources brought together and at the point of common coupling so that if needed, power can be drawn from the main grid. Let me uh, show you an example of this. The drawing of power is enabled through a set point. Let's say we have the set point to be 2000 watts or 2 kilowatts. And that the demand which is being fed by the transmission line is 11 kilowatts. Let's say also that on that particular day, the PV system is only generating 5 kilowatts because it's not a very uh, sunny day. So there's a deficit of 11 minus 5, which is 6 kilowatts. Thus, regardless of the fact that we have a 2 kilowatt set point, the generators would still supply the remaining 6 kilowatts so that the demand may be met. This brings us to Epic's smart home stage, which is akin to the distribution stage of the canonical four-stage model. Here we represent the loads by means of rectangular boxes. The non-critical load at the left is followed by the water test bed, which represents both SWOT and WADI test beds. Next, we have the critical load followed by the smart home. The smart home also has a load, which is the third motor that represents the presence of local generation capability. So, in summary, EPIC is a state-of-the-art electrical power system test bed. It's ideally suited for testing cyber security of electrical power systems in order to assess their vulnerabilities and it comprises typical electrical substation equipment. EPIC is an internationally accessible platform for experimentation and collaborative security trials on cyber physical systems.